Incognito from Posted on the Corner, tapping in Hot 107.9 and Remy Martin. We're about to do something special today. Live from Main Street Studios. We're going to mix it up ATL, talk about this mixtape culture. We're going to tap in with some of the greatest influencers from the city. Grab your ball with you. What up, this your boy DJ Monte, man. What's up, mixing in the ATL? What up, Incar? What up, Remy? I need a big bottle, big bottle, big bottle. This your boy DJ Monte, man. You know, in this industry for 27 years, man. Oomp Camp represent. And Atlanta Rays, what's happening? Talk about okay. Oomp Camp, the mixtapes, the stores. Let's talk about it, how it started. Let's take us through that journey. Well, it started for me. Um, uh man, I was a kid like in middle school and well really it it let me take you back cuz I always been into music, you know what I'm saying? So I was just like man, I just love music. Just love music. I had drums, I had a beat machine at the age of 9, and then I got introduced to a DJ Jilla MC Assault mixtape which was called 187 in uh middle school. And ever since then I wanted to be a DJ, you know what I'm saying? So I was like shit I need to become a DJ, and I, what I did was I was practicing with two tape decks with with them, trying to be like them. I I had nigger rig my whole room up, and I was trying to do mixes with two tape decks, and I put together a demo, and I was going up the uh, Greenbrier Flea Market, trying to get on Jelly's team like every weekend. And I used to buy they tapes with dimes, nickels, pennies, whatever I had in my fucking safe, cause I used to wash cars and made my own money. So whatever I saved up, you know, I went and got the tapes and then they finally came to my house one day and were like, bro, we want you to come join. Let me hear what you got. Played them some shit. Jelly took me up under his wing. I had to organize at least 2,000 records, alphabetical order before he just started showing me shit. And the next thing you know, I'm me right now. <laughs> That's tough. Let's talk Hell about yeah. uh, the mixtape culture, what it was like of taking a mixtape and having to go to a flea market or a store and get music heard. Mm. Ooh. Well, you talking about like a process of how I used to do it? Yes. Well, back then, man, we used to stay up 24-7. We had to finish a mixtape in like one day. So we up, we, as soon as we wake up to like 24 hours, dead ass 24 hours for a mixtape to be in the booth and we had a duplication system where we had like walls full of tape decks and we'll just dub them all up, we case them up, flip the artwork and then we'll take them to the stores and we'll, like we had like 12 stores back in the day. So we had tapes going circulating everywhere. Then that shit just blew up in the Southeast region. So we had to really turn it up some. And then even for CDs, we were like the first DJs to ever have like mixed CDs. So we had put our stuff on CDs and we were wholesaling all through the Southeast region. But man, that shit was a process. Take it, it took like 24 hours for real of non-stop work. Like you couldn't even really eat just to get one mixtape done. The, the, oh, so Oom Camp had their own stores. I remember that, but I'm saying like, that. Yeah. I didn't need the flea markets because y'all had stores. So now nah, we had stores and flea markets. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So like um, when it comes to the Oomp Camp brand and mm -hmm. creating those mixtapes. Mm -hmm. How do you feel as though it impacted not only Atlanta but the world? Well, we were so different, man. You know, normal DJs were doing two turntable stuff. So, what we were doing, we'll take it to the next level. We'll take your favorite beat mixed with your favorite acapella and blend the two together. You know what I'm saying? But we always, all if you listen to all our mixtapes, all our mixtapes have concepts. It never just was like, we just gonna blend anything. Like we'll just have a R and B slow bedroom shit. If you in a in a groove or some shit like that, or we have a house party mixtape. We'll have some booty shake shit. If you from like back then, and Luke and Splat Pack and all that shit was going crazy. So we'll have that. We'll have a workout CD. We'll have a fucking new rap shit. Just straight up West Coast down South shit. So man, that just like it helped with the music because we took what was here that didn't nobody know about. And just we'll blend it in with everything. That's how we did our music. That's how we got our own count shit going on too. Do you feel as though a mixtape can create a hit record? Of course. Well, for me, you know what I'm saying? Cause what, what, me doing mixtape as a DJ, like, especially doing it with DJ Jill and MC Assault, man. I do mixtapes with music I never heard of. You know what I'm saying? So it creates 
ideals for me. I'd be like, damn, if I could take this and flip this, and, you know, shit, lovers and friends, Lil John got that from my mixtape. You know what I'm saying? When we put 808s behind all the slow shit, and Lil John was like, bro, I ain't gonna lie to you. I took the idea from the mixtape. I was like, I knew it. Because he used to come by all our shit because they created ideals for him. Like, okay, so I'm finna. And even for me right now to this day, like, I still do mixes. I still do mix CDs. We got two stores, so I still do that shit. And they give me ideas for making beats. So hit records, yeah. They create some ideas for me. No, that passion still there. Yeah, let's, yeah. Let's talk about this Diamond Award <laughs> and, and this produced record that you have, which right. is your production side of it. But if it starts with low, let's talk about that. Well, you know, that's another record that came from me DJing in the club. You know, I used to do Club Chocolate, which was like two, three thousand people Friday, Saturday, probably like fifteen hundred on Sunday. You know what I'm saying? It was slow, but I used to play Booze Shake. And man, them girls be so turned up in there when I was playing it. It wasn't for the dudes, but the women, man, they loved it. So I was like, man, I gotta create a beat like this. This how I did Walk It Out too. You know what I'm saying? That's how Walk It Out came out. But I was like, I gotta, I gotta create a create a beat like that. So I made the beat. It was the only one beat like that. You know what I'm saying? So I put together a CD. It had the beat Foolish on there. It had some Walk It Out. You know, it had all kind of beats on there, but. Low beat was the only one I made like that. I really just didn't create a bunch of them like that. That was the only one. Sent it to this A&R named Mike Karen, man. He called me back with like, bro, just send me the track out for it. Sent it to me. I mean, I sent it to him because at that time I had to mail it. You know, I wasn't no email, I wasn't no none of that. So I had to mail the session on the, on the disc. Yeah, so um, I did that. It, then he sent me a record. Sent me the record. It was Paul Wall. And Juvenile on the record first. Powwow didn't want it. So he was like, I'm finna put goddamn uh, Flo Rider. I was like, who the fuck is Flo Rider, man? I did not know who he was. There it is mm -hmm. here. And I heard of a record, but I never knew him, like, personally. So he sent the record with Flo Rider on it. I said, oh, shit, this shit is out of here. I heard him rapping on there. I was like, man, the dude had a style that was just so different. And that shit was just riding the beat the way it was supposed to be going. Like he really killed it more than he did, you know, than Paul Wall and, and Juvenile. But man, he came to Atlanta, showed me videos of chicks dancing to it on YouTube. YouTube wasn't even that big. I think Soldier Boy just popped that off. But man, I was said this shit was hot. This, I said this shit out of here. He was at Hot 107.9 showing me that. I said, boy, this shit out of here. This shit crazy. Next thing you know, that shit started going movies. Goddamn, it was on Step It Up Three, and then it just went diamond on my birthday. Like December, really, it's like 12 minutes so and I got my official uh, plaque saying that it was diamond. How many other records are diamond? Uh, 42, 42 records that are diamond in the U.S. So that's that's a huge thing. And then the crazy part is to me, like to see Fetty Wap and and uh, the Trap Queen Diamond and Lil Nas X, it's just like damn, man, we still in the test of time with all that shit. Those two records of this generation that went diamond, but. We want a 42. In the past, and I start with greats like what, Michael Jackson and stuff like that? Well, Michael Jackson didn't even got, he got Diamond albums. Okay. Uh, diamond album. I don't think he had a Diamond record, you know. But even for the low record, like, I want to say like 10 years ago, it was still number eight out of 50 years of hip-hop and R&B. It still ended up being number eight. I think, like, Usher, um, yeah, it was like number four. So we was over Al Green and all that kind of shit. And like the number one record was like Chubba Ch Checker, Do the Twist or some shit like that. So, man, for me to see that, I was like, damn, that shit crazy. Out of 50 years, bro, there's so much music that came out, hip hop and R&B for 50 years. And for my record to be number eight, that shit was like God, man. God did that. Yeah, sir. So yeah. We hear your story of how you started. What was it like the first time you was out and you hear somebody riding by, DJ? Monte. Oh, well, see, you know, I'm in a, our studio's still in the hood, so we used to hear motherfuckers riding up and down the street with the mixtapes all the time, because, you know, I don't see it too much now, but back then, man, them Caprices, Cutlasses, and all that kind of shit had the beat in it, so people were riding up and down the street playing that shit. I'd be sitting at the light listening to something. That shit just, after a while, at first, I was like, damn, that shit crazy. It worked, the 
because our work ethics was crazy, man. We'll be up 24 hours and just to see this shit out on the street working for you, you know what I'm saying? Like, that shit was just a good feeling. Then after a while, this shit started getting numb and shit. So, until I started going on the road with T-Pain. But, and seeing how the reaction of Lowe, that's like one of his biggest records he performed. And that's like a whole new reaction for me. Um, well, let's talk about uh, how does, you know, with respect to the other mixtape cultures and other regions, mm -hmm. what makes Atlanta so special? Man, Atlanta I've always been talented. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what I I just don't even know why it's like become the the mega, but we just always been talented. We had our own style for so long, man. Like even when the kilos and the shotties and all that kind of shit, like we kinda a mixture of some a little we got soul, we got a little bit of Miami, we got a little bit of everything. Just, we like a big old gumbo pot. Like you can get everything out of Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? Cause I don't even know why it makes it so special. It's just you can get your R&B, you can get your 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 rap, you can get your conscious like everything that came out of here. It just was something about Atlanta, man. That just God shined the light on. You know what I'm saying? I really can't even explain it. Like the talent was just coming out of here. Sure, that's tough. And for me to be here, it's, it's like that's a real blessing. You know what I'm saying? A lot of play, a lot of people grow up in different places where can't get they they music, you know, out like that. Out of all of your mixtapes, what's your favorite? Ooh, shit. <clears throat> uh, it's a series called Thug Love, where I take um, rap beats and mix it over R&B music. And that shit just go crazy every time I put that out. How can we stream that? Right now, we have a website called uh, Mixtape Mobsters. Like, I uh, put together me, DJ Jelly, MC Assault, and Big Oomp. We stream all our old and our new category of mix CDs and mixtapes and stuff like that. So it's mixtape mobsters, www.mixtapemobsters, M O B S T A Z.com. So. And you're on the radio, right? Yeah, I'm on the radio with this, uh, what's this guy name? Oh, what's this dude? No, I'm just fucking with you. My brother in cop, man, you know, ATL bound, man. You know, that's my dude, man. So we rocking and we just got some big shit coming too, so. Monday through Friday, 8 to 9, man. Check me out. How long you been with Hot? I've been with Hot for at least, I want to say, 15, 16 years, maybe. Ever since, probably damn near the first, I want to say I came in like the third birthday bash. And, and my brother Jelly was here on the first two. So Jelly had got me really in the mix with this. And Empress Cersei had brought me along. In this, cause Jelly had moved to V103 at the time or something like that. I forgot the story, but Search was like, Monte, we need you. So then I was like, shit, I'm there. And I just end up being on the radio through Jerry Smoking B, um, you know, Hurricane Dave, and now I'm on there with uh, Tap Money and with you. So it's like, man, it's, it's been a journey. Speaking of birthday bash, we were speaking to DJ Sense earlier today. He spoke how he was at a birthday bash and he admired you and DJ Jelly having a booth just out in those mixtapes going crazy say he watched y'all move thousands of units uh that hand in hand how important was that hand in hand with mixtapes man we do that to this day you know what i'm saying we hustlers you know and plant embedded become hustlers to us so you know like even we'll have a booth at the Bronner brother show right now we all out there talking to customers because Hands on, man. You got to get, sometimes folks be like, nah, but then your mouth gang can get them over there. You know what I'm saying? Come check it out, man. Free listen, got them, you know? And we that's how we we all hustle like that. You know what I'm saying? We all got that work from, um, like, I don't know where he get it from, but you know, shit. He talked that to us, and that's how we all move. That's how we all maneuver, and you know, shit. That's, it end up working. Um, always been the marketing guy. Like he, he know how to get the shit rolling. He might not ever heard the mixtape, but he can make you buy ten of them. So that's how he taught us. And shit, that shit, we was just moving units like that. What up? This your boy DJ Monte, man. Represent Um Count Southern Style DJs, man. You know I'm mixing it up. ATL Remyway, man. You know me and my boy Encard. What's happening?